Thank you for choosing Kahnemaw Physician Group Gastroenterology for your health needs. Colonoscopy is a GI procedure when the physician examines a patient's colon using an imaging scope. Colonoscopy is recommended as a preventative screening for males and females over the age of 50. Your physician may also recommend colonoscopy if you are experiencing digestive issues. While colonoscopy screenings have become more utilized in recent years, there are still fears and misconceptions about what actually occurs before, during, and after the procedure. That's why our team interviewed patients who have had a colonoscopy to learn more about their experience and what they have to say about the physicians and staff at Connemaw Memorial Medical Center. I'm Dave Pepley, I own Family Hair Care in Riverside. I'm Stacy Roberts, and I'm a marketing coordinator at Connemaw Health System. I'm Amy Varmecki, and I am currently a graduate student at Penn State Harrisburg. Rhonda Lowry, I am the Associate Director in the Surgery Service Line. My name is Kim McColl, and I'm a manager here at Connemaw Hospital in the laboratory. My name is Boston Bradley, I'm a senior at Bishop McCord Catholic High School. Uh, just pre preventative screening, I'm at that age, I'm 54 years old, probably maybe a couple years late, um, just want to be cautious. I have ulcerative colitis, which is a GI issue of your colon, but I just go in as a preventative screen um, just because I'm at risk for colon cancer. Uh, I had mine because after I had a stomach virus, I was starting to experience some symptoms that Stacy has, so they just wanted to check to make sure that I didn't have the same medical diagnoses as what she does. I had no symptoms, but my PCP recommended that I have one since I am over the age of 50. I was having different symptoms, so I was going to have a test to figure out the diagnosis. Back in 2008, I was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. I was having some issues, which I ignored for about four months, and um, I know better now, of course, but um, back then, you know, it was embarrassing to talk about things like that or ask your doctor about it, and I could always explain them away with something else, and I was much too young. I was in my 40s, so I certainly didn't think I had colon cancer. Um, but then it got to the point on one Saturday that I was very ill and my husband said it's time to go to the emergency room, which we did. And then I had surgery and a few days later the doctor told me I had colon cancer. She hates needles. <laughs> she nope. hates them. I don't like the, I do not like the needles. That was about <laughs> it though. Yeah. I, was, I just wasn't ready for that. <laughs> um, I think for for me, just because I know I have a disease, every time I go in, um, not that I'm necessarily scared, but I'm, I'm always with the understanding that they could potentially find something. Um, so I, I think it's you know, more beneficial for me to, to have it done because it's better to catch something early if, if they do find something. So I don't think we really had any fears, per no. se, except your needle hole issue. My needle, yeah. Um, and I, just, I didn't really know what to expect going in, so it was good that I could ask her about it because she's, she's gone through it a lot, so mm -hmm. that, that helped ease it. <laughs> Uh, my major fears, I've you know heard of them, but I've never really knew much about them. Uh, so when I was able to come here and they kind of walked me through everything, uh, that was great. And it took a lot of the fear away. The only other thing I had years ago, I had a little surgery. Uh, I was a little scared over the anesthesiology, but it, they they's changed a lot since then. You don't get sick anymore. The 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 medication they give you it was you're out. You're, you're pet. You're out. It's all over before you even know it. From it being a healthcare professional, I wasn't scared about the procedure itself. The prep was the one thing that worried me because I'm thinking, oh, am I going to be up all night with this? You know, but the, it turned out not to be anything that I needed to really worry about. Um, the prep is the, probably the worst part of it, but it wasn't as bad as I thought. I think um, those that have had the prep, they kind of worry about, oh, am I going to have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the procedure or something like that happens. And, you know, really the, the staff, that doesn't happen and the staff just assure them that, you know, these, the, those fears are, are not to, to be too concerned about. We'll, we'll get you through all of that. So. I have no fear right now because I'm so used to it and I do try to educate people on that because it is embarrassing and I think that's why some people don't do it. But my mantra now is I will not die of embarrassment. So um, I'm pretty quick to tell people there's really nothing to worry about. My PCP ordered the test through the gastroenterology office here at Conema. Um, the office then contacted me with a date that I would have the procedure, sent me all of the paperwork that I needed, instructions, prescription for the prep in the mail, 
and then I got the, the script filled, did the prep, and had the test. No, it, di <laughs> it didn't hurt. <laughs> um, so whenever you go into the GI lab, you check in, um, the nurse comes in, does all of your medical history, you know, just kind of update your records as they need to. Um, then they come in, they give you an IV, um, and take blood pressure, mm -hmm. just kind of basic medical stuff that you do when you're admitting a patient. Um, and then once we were ready to go, the anesthesiologist came in to, to double check all of our information. Then they wheel you back to the GI procedure room, um, and then you just kind of lay there until mm -hmm. the doctor comes in and says we're yep. ready to get started. Um, and then once the doctor comes in, they give you some anesthesia, you go to sleep, and then you wake up wake later. Up. So yeah. I, I showed up. Um, everybody was super nice. I went into a room, got prepped. Um, the anesthesiologist come in, went over everything, told me about the new drugs. It was, you know, which did, you know, it was great. Um, nurses came in. Everybody was terrific. It's just they were like family up there. They're super nice. Made you feel very comfortable. Going into the uh, operating room was the same way. And again, before you know it, it was all over. Very smooth. Nice transition. Uh, once I got here, everyone was great. Uh, they made it really, you know, easier than I expected. So just to kind of be here and um, everything went well. It was no pain and I didn't feel really any discomfort before or after. It was not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I wondered how I was going to do without food for an entire day prior to the colonoscopy, but you're allowed clear liquids. So I had jello, I had apple juice, um, tea, black coffee. It all worked out okay. The prep itself, it is a very large container that you have to drink. Um, I was able to get it all down, but it did take you know a good part of the, the evening to, to get it all down. But other than that, it was fine. It wasn't that bad. All it is is that you take the drink, I don't know what it's called, but the drink that they give you um, the day before you go in for your colonoscopy. And it's not bad. It, it doesn't hurt or anything like that. It's just trying to clear out your system and it's, it's not bad at all. Yeah. I was I okay with it. I think it's more of a mental game um, yeah. because you're like, oh my gosh, I have this huge jug that I have to drink. <laughs> um, so what I actually do is I'll take like a marker and so I'll put like lines on it like okay so by this time I want to have you know this much gone um, mm -hmm. and then just kind of realistically just kind of sucking it up and doing it yeah. um, you know little things like taking water afterward mm -hmm. or sucking on a popsicle or something like that but mm -hmm. it's really just a mind game I think people just have a really bad um, stigma about it and so they psych themselves out but if you just relax and just drink it you you get through it actually You're pretty fine. quickly it wasn't bad I mean it, it's not good it wasn't bad um, it's like a thick water. It just it, um, the the hardest part was getting it all down, um, but I, I got it all down. And you just pace yourself, and it wasn't it wasn't too bad. So I, I just chase it with some seltzer water to help give a little bit of a fizz to it. And other than that, once it's done, you're done, and you have the rest of the day. And the next day, you go in for your testing. I was worried because I'm one that if I don't eat for a certain amount of time, I start getting really really sick, like lightheaded and nauseous and everything. So I was telling her about how I was worried that entire day but then just even just with eating the popsicles and everything I was perfectly fine like I wasn't wasn't sick at all and that that was good because that was another thing that kind of worried me but I was like okay this is this isn't as bad mm -hmm. I was actually surprised it wasn't as bad as I anticipated I just kind of went and drank it as quickly as I can and try to get it over with and I mean once you start doing it it's really not that bad but I think you know getting your mind to be able to say this isn't that bad is probably the hardest part one thing I always tell people is don't binge eat <laughs> the day before. That's what I did. Because whatever you eat that goes in has to come out. So make sure you're not binge eating and just kind of pacing yourself because otherwise it makes it for a longer night. <laughs> yeah. You're laying there and you're, you're talking to your surroundings. Everybody's very comfortable. And the next thing you know, you're starting to talk and they start counting a little backwards and you're out. and. You wake up and no pain, there's no pain involved at all. Um, very, very comfortable. I did have like an, an oral surgery the one time where I got this, the regular anesthesia, and I remember being really sick in the car afterwards. So I was expecting that to happen after my colonoscopy, and I was really surprised that I, I wasn't sick. Like I wasn't nauseous, I wasn't lightheaded or anything like that. These uh, anesthesiologists spoke to me early in the morning before the procedure. Um, when I went into the procedure, um, they just said, we're going to give you a little something in your IV, and I don't remember anything after that. Went right to sleep. This is a very painless procedure. I woke right up. 
I was completely alert with it. Um, and yeah, it was, it was very easy and stress-free. I was not really nervous about it to start, but I was kind of curious because I've never had you know, anything like that um, done to me before. But honestly, it was, I didn't feel anything. Like I don't really remember it at all. I just kind of went to sleep and when I woke up, I felt fine. I felt you know, pretty good. Just kind of felt like a nap. <laughs> They put in an IV, of course, you know, just like any other IV that you have, and then they'll say, go to your happy place, and before you know it, you're waking up. I mean, it's that quick, and it's not, they're not putting anything over your face, you know, it's not a gas, it's just a liquid in a, an IV, and so it goes very quickly. I personally love anesthesia. <laughs> um, I think it's the best sleep that you ever get. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, every time I've gone, they use propofol, and I think that's what mm -hmm. they use for that's you too. So if you're coming out of a regular surgery, you kind of have that drowsy phase, and you have to sleep it off maybe the rest of the day. Um, but with the propofol they give you, it's pretty much as soon as you're done, and it's out of your si I mean, you wake up wait. instantly. Yeah, um, I, was, I wasn't expecting that, because you always hear about how after anesthesia, you're really loopy, and you, you don't really know what's going on. But I was really surprised about but how, not only how quickly it, it puts you out to start the procedure, but then how you just wake up in your room and you're like, oh, it's done. It didn't take me long to, I mean, everything went back to normal real quick. So it was pretty, pretty easy to get back on track. There were no restrictions on activity after the colonoscopy that I had, and I was able to leave from there. I was off work that day. You know, I just took off just in case, but actually I just go home and resume my regular duties. I was able to walk. There was no discomfort or no pain afterwards. I mean, my, my wife was with me to drive me home because they want somebody to take you home. But otherwise, I was home and I felt fine. I felt great. It was like nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much as soon as we were done and you wake up, you're, you're good to go back to, to everything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they tell you to, to just don't, not do anything strenuous or anything like that in case you had any biopsies. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, you just kind of yeah, go back I, to what you're doing. You, can't, you just can't drive at first, but as soon as I got home, I was, you know, I was watching TV, I was cleaning the house, I was on the computer, just doing what we usually do. Um, as soon as I got home, I was still a little bit tired, but I was able to, you know, have my have some breakfast, um, drink some coffee, and I got back into my regular activities. Because you don't want to put it off and then find out later that you actually had something wrong. You want to catch something early. You want to make sure that you can treat it early. It was good to know then what. I guess you can say my body looks like on the inside in terms of are you healthy, are you not healthy, and that put me at ease because even if I did just go in without any symptoms, it's still good to know whether or not you're healthy and if there's any sort of preventative steps or any additional things that you can add to your routine to then kind of put your body back to shape and get back to health. Well, I, I was in that same scenario, but and I decided to get it done because you hear so much of people having certain cancers and all of a sudden it's too late, stage three, stage four. And again, it was so painless and it's, it's stupid not to. It's very, it's, it's just, there's no reason not to get it done. You hear so many, and I have so many people that have gone through cancers or have passed from cancer of certain things and it just could have been prevented. It's the third most common cancer in the United States. Um, if you don't get it taken care of, you have a chance that you don't live very long. But it is very common, and it's common in both men and women. It's 50% men, 50% women have this, it could get this cancer. So I would say just do your first screening, and then they might say you're okay, come back in five years. So the chance of getting a polyp removed during that procedure, I mean, if they find a polyp, they remove it. Even if it's not cancerous, at least it's gone and it gives you peace of mind. So I do encourage people because it is such a common cancer in the United States. I loved them. I thought they were really, really nice. For me, it was my very first time meeting them and they were super, super sweet. I had no idea what was going on whenever I first got to the lab. Um, even just for like my initial meeting uh, with the doctor, I was, I was a little nervous just because I didn't know what, was, what to expect, but they were so nice. The, the nurses, the receptionists, the doctor, every one of them, they put you at ease, they relax you, and they're just there to support you and be positive the whole time. Everyone here was great. They did an uh, excellent job you know, walking me through everything. They didn't do anything without explaining it to me fully first, which was awesome because I'd never been in anything like this, so to have a bunch of people be really friendly and walk me through every step, 
and let me know what was going on was was awesome. So it actually made it you know a lot easier to go through instead of being worried about everything. They never treat you like a number. Um, mm -hmm. To them, it's you know you're you're another patient that they're providing exceptional care to. Um, so they take the time and the energy to make sure they're providing that exceptional care. But I think they just do a very good job at, at making people you know feel at ease and and being lighthearted enough to you know mm -hmm. joke around about things and um, you know calm the fears. Oh, super knowledgeable, uh, very comfortable. They're all uh, professional, easy to talk to, make you feel comfortable. I have, like I said, it just felt like you know, almost like family. They were super nice. Staff was super nice. Doctors were great. Um, couldn't ask for better, better care. The GI lab staff are a very well-oiled machine. They do a great job there. They process a lot of patients through the uh, clinic every day. Um, they're very skilled at what they do um, and very compassionate with the patients. This, these procedures are always a little scary, but they handle those patients very well and, you know, show the compassion and the empathy. Um, Dr. Abu, Dr. Paletti, excellent gastroenterology interventionalist and are very, very, uh, also very empathetic and supportive for the patients. At Conema, that's the only place I did have my procedures done and I've had many uh, of the colonoscopies and the staff are wonderful. I've known them for years. They're very warm and friendly and inviting. They understand that you might have some fears, especially if you've had a history of cancer. They understand that. So, you know, they're stroking your arm. They're saying, you're, you're gonna get through this, you'll be fine. Um, and like I said, it's just, it's just such a team that is working with me, and I, I like that feeling of teamwork. They make sure that they answer our questions in entirety and make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, we feel comfortable leaving, that, that we didn't have anything left out. So I, don't, I, I think it's a wonderful experience for, for as wonderful as it can be for a medical procedure. I think they do a really great job in the GI lab. It was, it was actually a lot easier than um, you know, many people think. I think it was a lot of people, you know, that's something that no one really wants to do, but at the end of the day, it's something that you should. And uh, if you need to, this is an excellent place for it. I thought everyone did a great job and they made it as easy as possible and, you know, and as enjoyable as it could be. I felt so incredibly comfortable here. It was, it was an absolutely amazing experience. I would recommend it to anyone. Top nurses, top doctors, top procedures here. It's wonderful. I was young. It wasn't in my family. So many things going on. You know, so many things run through your mind. I had six months of chemotherapy, you know, a huge surgery. Um, so I can just say I had everything done here at Conema. Such a team working together with me, radiology, laboratory. Uh, the physicians, oncology, everything was done here and I truly feel that I was well taken care of. I didn't have to leave this area to go have this treatments done. So um, I'm just saying that anybody that's in their 50s, 50 or above or don't have any symptoms or anything, get it done. It's, it's well worth getting done. Um, it's painless um, because if, if you wait too long, it could be too late. Being from a healthcare background, Knowing um, my background with working with in the cancer center and knowing that can colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths, I would highly encourage somebody to just get the screening colonoscopy. It was very easy, it was very quick, um, and as I said, the worst part of it was the prep and even that wasn't so bad. I just think it's, it saves lives. It's something that and once you do turn 50, it is very important to get that screening colonoscopy. If it's clear, you don't have to come back for eight to 10 years. It is a common cancer. Um, I was very surprised <clears throat> to hear that when I was diagnosed, people said, well, but you're a woman. Women don't get colon cancer. I said, well, women have colons, so yes, they can get colon cancer. So that was one of the biggest misconceptions that I ran into, that, that women actually get that disease. You can get it before you're 50, so watch out for signs and symptoms. And if you're even in your 20s and you're having symptoms, you know, uh, un unexplained weight loss, bloating, abdominal pain, change in bowel habits, See your physician, talk to your physician immediately about that because it doesn't matter. I was one of those cases they couldn't figure out how it happened to me when it wasn't in my family. Um, I don't have a high fat diet, things like that. I'm not a smoker and that's, you know, some of the, um, uh, some people who get colon cancer ha have those kind of habits but that wasn't me. So I was just very surprised and the doctors were surprised as well. So I'm out there, you know, hitting the pavement telling people don't be afraid of it, don't be embarrassed by it, get screened.
I think it's just really important for people to take the time to care for themselves. Um, I know especially me now as a mom, I put myself last. It's always my son first, my husband first, my dogs mm -hmm. first, everybody else is always first. Um, and I think that a lot of people, especially women, kind of you know put it off and, okay, I'll get to when I have time, when I have time. Um, and it seems like in today's world we never have time, so it's important mm -hmm. for people to make the time to come and have a procedure done, um, especially if their doctor recommends it for one reason or another, because it could realistically be life-saving if mm -hmm. it's something, you know, if they find something, if you're having an issue. Get a colonoscopy. <laughs> to learn more about colonoscopy, visit www.conemaw.org or talk to your primary care physician.